This is a quick walk through the new Typo3 REST API extension. It will allow you to connect your front-end application written in JavaScript, Vue.js, React, or other technologies with a Typo3 backend. And you can set it up pretty fast and easy. So let's get started by installing the extension. I'm doing this with the latest Typo3 version, which currently is version 11, but the NN REST API extension will also work under Typo3 9 or 10. Let's go to the command line and use composer require NNG, which is 99 degrees, NN REST API. The extension was installed now together with one dependency called NN Helpers. And now we can switch to the back end and continue the installation. Next step, we have to include the static templates on the root page. So we're going to edit the records and look for the REST API configuration here, include it and save it. If you then switch to the REST API backend module, you'll see he wants you to include one more or let's say two more lines into your site configuration. So I'm going to copy this, go to the folder with the site configuration, open it in an editor and paste it in the end of the script. Here we go. Back to the back end, make sure to hit the clear cache button. And then if you load the module again, you'll see one more thing that he wants. He wants you to include something into your HD access file. This is optional. You don't have to do it on, on all servers, but with most of our installations, we had to include it. It um, has to do with authorization and with forwarding cer certain headers to Typo3. So we're going to copy this and look for the line in your HT access that says rewrite engine on and paste it right underneath. After reloading the backend module, you'll see that all messages have disappeared and we're now ready to start and test the REST API. The extension comes with a nice test bed where you can actually compose requests without having to use external tools like Postman or other things. You can see all these endpoints here were delivered with the extension. And uh, you have, of course, some endpoints for just simply testing different types of requests or even for authorizing front-end users. Click on details if you want to find out more. And you can also see here who has access to this endpoint. Endpoints can be restricted to certain front-end users, to API users or IP addresses. I'll show you that later. We're going to now do our first tests using basic request types. So let's start with the GET request. If you click here, you can see that it automatically takes the URL and pastes it here into the test bed. So it's pretty simple to go through and test things. Um, this is going to be a very basic GET request. Submit, and it says, OK, everything is fine. It called the API index function. So great, we can continue with something more complex. Let's send a POST request. A POST request, of course, can have a body. So I'm going to put in a JSON here, send it to the server, and it will respond with the answer and the data that I sent. You can see here, files. And files, of course, is a very interesting topic because usually it's pretty complicated to send files together with a JSON in one request. We solve this with placeholders. What I'm going to do here is simply select a file that I have on my desktop. And then I'm going to use this special placeholder here. Let's imagine that we want to have a file reference attached to image. Submit. And you can see it would have theoretically converted the file to, to a sys file. It's not going to do this in the test environment, but later if you have your own models, it's going to be a real sys file reference. The REST API extension ships with endpoints to authorize front-end users and also to check if a front-end user is logged in. It uses JSON web tokens for that or cookies or basic auth. So you have three possibilities to authorize your user. I created a standard Typo3 front-end user. We're going to test logging him in. You can see an endpoint here. It's called post API auth. 
All you have to do is enter his credentials as a post body, submit, and the system will respond with the user ID and username and the JSON web token down here. You can use this JSON web token then to send further requests, just paste it into here. And then whenever you call an endpoint, it will automatically be sent to the server. So you don't have to copy and paste things. You can also use the form up here to log in. It will then automatically fill out the JSON web token field and the cookie field. To check if the front end user is currently logged in, you can send a simple get request to API user. And if everything's okay, it will respond with the user ID and username. Let's now build our own little extension that's gonna be based on this REST API. You can either do that by hand by reading the manual or use the Kickstarter here. The Kickstarter allows you to create an extension for Typo3 that's based on the REST API. All you have to do, enter a vendor name and an extension name, click on the package you would like to download, and it will automatically namespace all the classes and also rename files and everything that it has to do. So you've got an extension that can be installed. I'm gonna do that now and be back in just a second. Okay, the extension was installed now. I'm gonna make sure that the root templates are also included. And then we can have a look at our overview. You can see here now we have a whole lot more endpoints. These are all endpoints that you can use now to develop your own REST API. If you only want to see your own endpoints, you can always click hide and then REST API here and it leaves you with the ones that come from other extensions. I will now create my first real model in Typo3 by sending a post request to API entry and of course, entering some post data. You can see it created a real model with a real UID, so that works fine. Next, let's try to retrieve the model from the database. Get request to API entry with the UID. There it is, with the title. Now we're gonna to try to change the title. We're gonna use the put request for that. Again, send it to the right URL. Title was changed, works fine. And last but not least, we're gonna delete the model. It returns us a list of all existing models and we can see nothing is left, so everything worked out fine. Next, I'm going to create a model with a file reference. Again, send it to the post request. This time I'll attach a file and modify the body. So we're gonna use the files upload placeholder here. It's gonna be an object storage in this case. So I'm gonna just simply use an array, submit. And here we go. You can see it created a file reference and uh, returned it then as a JSON. And just to prove that it really is a normal Typo3 model, I'm gonna to switch to the list view here, have a look at the model. And you can see here my files actually have a real sys file reference attached. So you can see it's really easy to get um, things up and running with the Typo3 REST API. Now the final look for today is gonna to be a look into the actual class. You can see here I dived into the new extension I just installed. And this is what our Kickstarter um, supplied us with. Um, the basic syntax you can see of course in the documentation, but um, like you can see here, it's pretty easy. We're using annotations to decide, for example, who's gonna be allowed to access the endpoints you can localize the data, of course, um, and you can uh, either have custom routing or standardized routing. So every method in here that's prefixed with a get will be um, accessed with a get request or a post request. 
And yeah, everything else you can read in the documentation. Have fun.